Mississippi is a great state, Byron. It is a, it is filled with fantastic people. It's filled with with terrific neighbors, and and, and this is not the, th- this bill that our governor signed is not another mark against us. It's another mark for us. Hi, and welcome to this week's Pastors Forum. I'm Byron Tyler. Always a pleasure to have you stop by and visit with an area pastor to find out what they're up to in their ministry. Sometimes uh, I get desperate, but when I get desperate, I find the right people to join me on the program, like this week's Trevor Davis. And (laughs) Trevor is the pastor of the Great Commission Church in uh, Mississippi, and it's good to have you here, Trevor. And hey, today's your day off. We record the show during the week, and I called you this morning. I said, Trevor, can you help me out? You were so gracious. Byron, my love affair with WCRV started about a month after I was I became a Christian in 1989, and it grows, and so you, don't, you never have to twist my arm to come here. What were some of the benefits that Bot Radio had for you during that time? That's a good question. It, Bot Radio helped disciple me. Um, I had mentors, and in, in when I first uh, became a believer and was converted, and th- they stressed the need to pray every day, read the scriptures, and to feed my spirit. I said, well, how do you feed your spirit? They, they suggested, listen to Christian radio. And at the time, there was no FM Christian music station in Memphis, in the Memphis area, but there was a, there was a blistering AM preaching station that you could pick up all, uh, basically all night long. And so, uh, so I remember uh, sitting in my, my vehicle, I'm, I'm, and I'm not exaggerating, uh, every morning before school from the ninth grade until I graduated high school, before I went into the school building, I would listen to Love Worth Finding with Adrian Rogers on AM 640, uh, and it was part of my daily devotions. Every morning? Every morning, Friday, Monday through Friday. So this started when you were in high school? I was 15 years old. That's right. In Mississippi, you can drive when you're 15. That, that's, that's correct. <laughs> Not anymore. No, I, mean, I have a 15-year-old son now, and he, he has to wait until he's 16. Oh, so they changed They that changed law. it, Yeah. I didn't realize that. <laughs> now, you've been pastoring the Great Commission Church for how long now? We started in, uh, in 19, ni- 1999, so since then, whatever that is, almost 17 years. My goodness, it seems like uh, time's gone by quick. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have any children or gray hair when we started. <laughs> I don't see any gray hair, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, tell me about your passion for this ministry. I mean, why? I mean, this was a church plant. Correct. And you were, you're were you the first pastor. Yes. And yes. Uh, why did you decide that there was a need for the Great Commission Church? Well, the answer to your question is I didn't make that decision. We had a sponsoring church. And my pastor, who I served under at the time, Dr. P.J. Scott, uh, was pastor of First Baptist Church in Olive Branch. And at the time, Olive Branch in the late 90s and the early 2000s, depending on which poll you read, was one of, if not the fastest growing cities per capita in the United States. And so there was uh, just some foresight there from the leaders at First Baptist that, hey, our city's growing faster than our church will ever be able to grow. Let's go and start some new works. And so they uh, they sent us out and uh, underwrote I- anything that our offerings couldn't, couldn't cover and said, go start any kind of church you, you like, any, any style, any, any methodology. Just preach the gospel and let's try to go fish in a different pond in our city. And that's what we did. You know, what's interesting about that is that you said 17 years ago, these men, and I'm sure women were involved too, sure. had the vision mm-hmm. to believe there was going to be growth in North Mississippi. I mean, that vision, that growth process has not stopped. No, it it, it uh, slowed a little bit, but it hasn't stopped. Uh, Olive Branch is my hometown, and when my parents moved there from Arkansas in the early 1970s, uh, the the the, <laughs> the town limits, not the city limits, the the town limits sign said population 1,032. <laughs> uh, they have a few more than that today. Isn't that incredible? You know, it really is pretty. And I think this community is one of the fastest growing communities, not only Mississippi, but in the country. It is. And I think just about every suburb of Memphis in the metro area is, is, has enjoyed growth. And it's just, it's just a great place to live, Byron. It just really is. Now, recently, the governor of uh, Mississippi signed into law, matter of fact, uh, a bill that's getting a lot of attention in the media right now. Uh, and I think the official title is uh, HB 1523, Protecting Freedom of Conscience, 
from Government Discrimination Act. How familiar are you with this uh, particular bill? And uh, did you know the governor was considering signing it uh, before he did sign it? Yes. <laughs> Mississippi has an active legislature and active meaning uh, <laughs> there there is no shortage of bills coming through the House from a conservative viewpoint, which is going to be just the opposite of maybe the mainstream media and what you might see in the news. And so before, the week before this bill was signed, we had our uh, Second Amendment rights even more fortified in Mississippi under Governor Bryant's leadership. And it didn't make the headlines like this one because it's such a hot-button topic. House Bill 15... 15- 23, is that right? That's 1523, 1523. right. You're right. So when the Supreme Court struck down the traditional marriage, uh, that overturned many states, you know, when they yes. signed, signed into law the uh, Marriage Freedom Act, I believe. Is it the Marriage Freedom Act? Defense of Marriage Act. Defense of Doma. Marriage Act. That's right, the DOMA. That, it, that Bill Clinton put into uh, uh, acting back when he was president, <laughs> which is surprising. This bill is, like, as you, we said, is getting a lot of attention. And uh, I think just like a week before, the governor of Georgia, uh, on a similar bill, uh, did not sign the bill. Yeah, he vetoed it. He vetoed the bill. And and ruffled the feathers of many Christians and just many in the state of Georgia who believe that our First Amendment rights, particularly of freedom of religion, should not be infringed upon. Uh, and and <laughs> so Governor Bryant's signature was the opposite of Governor Deals. Governor Deals was widely applauded in the in the mainstream media, and Governor Bryant's has been uh, spoken of in in the uh, in, in the negative. And Governor Deal, Nathan Deal, that vetoed, that was, that was House Bill 757, uh, he's quoted as saying, I do not uh, think we have to discriminate against anyone to protect the faith-based community in Georgia, which I and my family have been a part of for all of our lives. There's uh, a buzzword there. When did the word discriminate become a four-letter word? That's what we have to ask ourselves. Uh, now, it's if someone uh, says the word discriminate, it the, the context and the and the nuance has to be that discriminating in any form is bad. When we all know that we make discriminating decisions every day of our life, are we my, gonna, you know, case in point, if my granddaughter decides to run out on I two forty, she's three years old. I'm going to be very discriminative, and I'm going to go grab her out of the yes, highway. You disagreed with her decision, <laughs> exactly. in a loving way. Yeah, and and so it's possible to discriminate and be positive, uh, or or to or to dis- make a discriminating decision and be helpful. Yeah. Not only as a pastor, uh, Trevor, but as just a citizen of the state of Mississippi, you've lived your life there. Why is this so important for, you know, for Mississippi? Mississippi gets a very negative rap. Uh, We come in last in many polls of education, fitness, physical uh, uh, fitness, and so forth. Uh, And if you've never lived there, maybe you don't understand. Mississippi is a great state, Byron. It is a, it is filled with fantastic people. It's filled with with terrific neighbors. And and, and this is not the, this, this bill that our governor signed is not another mark against us. It's another mark for us. And uh, the, the 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 fabric of the people of Mississippi is there's a biblical worldview. There's a there's a sanctity of life. And there's certainly uh, this slice of Americana if you live there that says we love our constitution, we love our Bill of Rights, and we don't want that to change. And we certainly don't want left to be right and up to be down and everything to, to be flipped on its head anymore. And so I think that what the Mississippi governor has signed in the law, obviously the legislature put it on his desk. I think it's the tip of the iceberg, and I think many others will, will be um, in the future, many more lawmakers will be encouraged and filled with, with courage to, to, to sign in, uh, the same kind of legislation. I think it was the first domino to fall. Seems to me, Trevor, that in good foresight, as you mentioned, that uh, there was a group of people who had foresight to build the Great Commission Church yes. in North Mississippi. Uh, it seems like the team of Governor Bryant in Mississippi had good foresight, too, to put this law into uh, 
effect to protect the people of Mississippi. Well, we shouldn't think of Governor Bryant as a rogue politician. He's not that. He's not a maverick. He understands his con- constituency, and he understands that at least two-thirds of the voting public in Mississippi agrees with him on these kind of moral issues. And so, in a sense, he's just putting into effect the will of the people of our state. Yeah. I'd like to quote uh, Tony Perkins. You know, he's the president of the Family Research Council. Yes, the FRC. You can hear Tony weekdays on Bot Radio uh, in the afternoon at 4 p.m. live, 4 to 5 And uh, Tony says that big business in Hollywood have engaged in economic blackmail in Mississippi, just as they have in Indiana, Georgia, North Carolina, and Texas, to try to force government discrimination of those who support natural marriage. However, unlike Indiana and Georgia, leaders in Mississippi, North Carolina, and Texas have chosen to defend the fundamental freedom of their citizens to believe and live according to those beliefs, rather than capitalize. Uh, to the economic threats of uh, big business and entertainment. Yes. These, this kind of pressure, this outward pressure from, from big businesses, from big media conglomerates, even professional sports franchises, um, I, I believe it's unwelcome here, at least in the South, to come in and say, we don't like that you believe differently than us on this. And so because of that, we're going to take our ball proverbially and go home. Uh, uh, Atlanta, you're not going to get the Super Bowl. Charlotte, you're not going to get whichever one, uh, the, the, the uh, NFL game, I think. No, it was the NBA all-star game. I look at that and say, there are some bullies here, and it is not the voting public in those states. It, it is these. It, it it would be these media groups and these other folks that are coming and putting pressure. That is bullying in in every definition of the word. Uh, they don't live here. They're saying, but we're gonna we're gonna make sure. And even even some of the governors from other states have banned their state employees from from traveling to these other states on, on the dime of, of the state that they work in. I, I know one of them was the state of Vermont. I, I don't think there was an epidemic beforehand <laughs> of people from Vermont traveling to Mississippi anyway. I mean, uh, w- w- what did he save us? A quarter? I mean, really. Uh, did I answer your question? Yeah, I think you did. I think you did, Trevor. Wow. Well, our time on this program is slipping quickly, and we're going to have to kind of wrap up this segment, but we're going to continue the conversation for next week on Pastors Forum. But uh, Great Commission Church, a lot of exciting things are happening there, and we're going to spend more time on our next uh, program to talk about that. Very good. Uh, you said 17 years. Give me a highlight for you over these past 17 years of the ministry. Hey, our biggest highlight. Uh, happened just a little over a month ago when we had our uh, our second annual World Missions Conference at our church. And we, we support uh, missionaries and church planters literally uh, all around the world. And, uh, and, and many of them uh, flew in to be with us uh, for the weekend of our missions conference and gave reports on what the Lord's doing in the ministries that they're in. Uh, and uh, so we were able to rejoice with them over the work of the Lord and also meet and hug the necks of the missionaries and the church planters that, that we interact with all year long via, via email, texting, Skype. Uh, so I think all of our members left that weekend going, to, I, I'm not sure they can get any better than that. What a great story. And you know, really, that's why your church is called the Great Commission Church. Well, we, we were challenged to begin to live up to our name. So this World Missions uh, emphasis is, is somewhat new to us, but boy, do we love it. And people are getting excited about it? Yes, absolutely. And are you taking trips too in various countries? We have three tri- trips scheduled this year, two to Nicaragua and one to uh, Kenya. So, uh, and Lord willing, we'll have more. How can we find out more information about the church? All of it is at our website, gccob.com. That stands for Great Commission Church Olive Branch. And give us some directions on how to find you. Oh, we're easy to find. You get on Hacks Crossroad anywhere in Memphis and go south into Mississippi and take a left at Highway 302. We are two miles down on the left. What are your service times? 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. every Sunday. Trevor, thank you so much. On a short notice, we appreciate you stopping by. We'll pick up the conversation next time. Thank you very much. Trevor Davis with Great Commission Church is our guest this week on Pastors Forum. We'll continue with Trevor next time right here on AM 640 and FM 100.7. I'm Byron Tyler. We'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.